It's game time on WZOT 101.9. This is Rock Mart High Football, presented by Garrett Land Company, Mitchell Chiropractic, Mary Miller State Farm, Taylor Transport, Blossman Propane Gas and Appliance, Rake Straw Tire and Automotive, Clint Brock and the Rock Mart Raceway, Live Wire Surplus, Smith's Land Clear, Jennifer Holtzy and the Lankford Insurance Firm. John and Debbie Forsyth of Merle Norman Cosmetics and Boutique. Culver Exterminating Company. All right, welcome to Rockmart High School football here on WZOT. It's homecoming tonight at uh, The Rock, and uh, the weather is is a little bit windy, but uh, we're just thankful that it got it missed us pretty much, and uh, and we're ready to play some football here tonight. I'm Mark Lumpkin. I've got Michael Keener. He uh, he finished his job at his other radio station, and he moved in here to help us tonight. Lordy, I, I Lordy. appreciate that. We got David is uh, cause of the weather. He couldn't make it because he had to uh, work for Georgia Power, and they are pretty much slammed right now. I think so. Uh, David's not here, and and Greg was just too sorry to come. But no. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, okay. throw him under the bus. <laughs> All right, but uh, but we are we're here tonight, and uh, Michael's gonna be pulling double duty. He's going to be working the camera and hopefully helping me do this do the talking. We'll, we'll, we'll get through it. We'll get through and, it. It's, uh, and it, we got Mark Garrett over here. He's I don't know what's he doing, Michael. Well, if he <laughs> tries to say something and and something don't work correctly, you can forget <laughs> it. He ain't gonna say nothing else the rest of the night. He's done. He, his nerves can't take it. All right, well, the Jackets are getting ready to take on the Sonoraville uh, Phoenix tonight. This is should be a pretty good matchup. I think both these teams pretty well matched. Sonoraville, um, really looking at the standings and stuff, Sonoraville was going to be one of the teams that uh, was probably going to be up there uh, toward the top right now in the standings. Got North Cobb Christian and Rotmart sitting at the top of the, the list. I think Sonoraville's right behind them, but – uh, so Norville, I think it was last week, went into six overtimes with uh, with Cahulla Creek. Right, right. And uh, and no. I think they finally pulled out. They Cahulla Creek won, didn't they? We was at Cahulla Creek. That's right, we were. But where did, they played somebody and went into six overtimes. I can't I, remember. I remember that. I remember going through that. Robert then was talking about it uh, in, in the in the pre uh, post game show. Yeah. Uh, can't remember what team it was. I can't remember, but. But they went into six overtimes with them and uh, with Ringo. That's Ringo, who, that's right. And, uh, yep. and so I think they they pulled out a win up there. Um, but uh, but here tonight the Jackets come in here off of a win last week up at up at Cahulla Creek. Right. So uh, we had a pretty good um, pretty good showing up there as far as the first half went. Uh, first half the Jackets just rolled pretty good. Second half half we got a little sluggish. Uh, on some of the things, but uh, but I know we probably worked on that this week. I guess everybody probably had a short week as far as practice goes. Uh, I don't know if Sonorville got to practice yesterday, but uh, I know that the Jackets didn't. But Thursday night's usually just the walk through and uh, no pads or anything like that. So, you know, we hit it, we hit it early in the week with um, some of the issues that we ran into last week, but. Uh, but hopefully tonight that's going to be cleared up and uh, we can get on the board early and just keep rolling. We're about a little bit over five minutes away from kicking off this thing tonight. It's homecoming. We'll be bringing you all the homecoming festivities tonight at halftime. So you just stick with us and uh, and we'll, we'll have that for you. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to be back and get ready to kick this thing off. The right price for the right protection? It exists, and Rock Mart Allstate agent Bree Brown can help you get it. Contact her for your free quote. If you live in the South, two things are almost certain. Your outside activities will be threatened by unwanted mosquitoes, and any untreated wood is highly susceptible to termite damage. Harrelson Termite can help you get a handle on your uninvited invaders before they take over. They have over 100 years of termite and pest control experience and are the largest pest control company in Polk County. Give them a call today for a termite inspection or to treat your yard for mosquitoes before your next outdoor event. 
They also treat other pesky insects like bed bugs, ants, roaches, wasps, and hornets. Harrelson Termite in Brockmine. Call 770-684-1488 to schedule an appointment. For decades, Rockmart has been fortunate to have a grading company with a stellar reputation and a record of providing the finest in grading and hauling services. Jerry Ferguson has been doing grading that is second to none in the Rockmart area for many years and continues today. Give Jerry or Dana Ferguson a call at 770-655-3440 or 770-684-1671. For grading, hauling, septic systems, driveways, or clearing, call Ferguson Construction. Do it yourself doesn't mean do it alone. For 50 years, Buy Low True Value has been helping our customers do the projects, repairs, and maintenance. Buy Low True Value Hardware, 308 Nathan Dean Parkway in Rockmark. Call 770-684-5075 or look us up on Facebook. Hey, Jacket Nation. Coach Parson here, head football coach of the Rockmark Yellow Jackets. I want to thank you for supporting our student athletes tonight at Rockmar High School. All right, we're back here getting ready to kick this thing off. We got our captains out on the field. Who we got, Michael? Well, it looks like it's an all senior night, which is uh, pretty much the way it goes when you got home coming. Anderson, number two, uh, Williams, number six, Luke Clay, number seven, and uh, Glover, number 11. That's our captains for tonight. Uh, Y'all can see them there on Facebook as they get ready to go out to midfield for the coin toss. All right, so we'll see what uh, what we do tonight. Last week was a little bit different. We won the toss, but we deferred to the second half, uh, which is a little bit um, different for the Jackets. All right, so the captain's going out there, getting ready for the coin toss right now. Jackets are lined up in the in the big helmet tunnel, getting ready to run out. Hey, thanks for tuning in tonight. You can listen to us on uh, AM 1220, 101.9 FM. You can catch us on the TuneIn app. Uh, you can catch all the action on Facebook at WZOT Radio on our Facebook page. But we're just thankful that you're tuning in, and thanks to all of our sponsors for uh, helping bring Rockmart High School football and, and sports, all of Rockmart High School sports here to you. Getting ready for the toss out there. Referee giving the giving the captain's instructions. Great crowd on hand for homecoming tonight. Big Lo crowd. Looks like Rockmart won the toss. And they have deferred to the second half. So that's a little bit little bit different than we've been seeing. Usually Coach Parson will put his offense on the on the field, but uh, we're going to put our defense. Our defense has been playing outstanding, and so we'll uh, we'll get to see them first tonight. I guess Coach Parson figures that, you know, they've got the strength of that defense. He's going to put them out there first and uh, hopefully put a, get a stop early in the game. Yeah, it worked last week. He figured if it worked last week, it worked this week. They put points on the board quickly last week. And like I said, it might be a little bit different tonight with this Norville High School team. Uh, they are they are a, supposed to be a pretty decent football team. But the Jackets, uh, like I said, coming in off of a win last week at Cahulla Creek. Hopefully we can keep that momentum pushing here into this game and pull out a win tonight. All right, the Jackets getting ready to come through the run through. Getting ready to run through the tunnel. We don't have a run through tonight because the wind probably uh, wouldn't allow us to keep it up. We usually have a big run through, but uh, there comes Sonorval through theirs. Here comes the Jackets. Everybody got their noisemakers in the grandstands tonight. Yeah, good crowd here tonight. We get ready to kick this thing off. Yeah, the cheerleaders are having a little bit of trouble with the flags. It's hard <laughs> having to run against the wind there. It's slowing them down. Yeah, we're looking at the flags above the stadium around the bleachers. They're, they're blowing pretty heavy right now. And um, 
and that might be a factor tonight as we um, – As far as punting and kicking field goals. Yeah. Uh, says the wind's about seven, eight mile an hour right now. Hopefully we won't have – any rain the rest of the night. It's kind of a chance of some rain coming in, just the small showers it looks like, but uh, we're hoping that holds off. All right, Jackets lined up, getting ready to kick this off. They're going to be kicking from our uh, right to the left, kicking toward Carlton Farm. Yeah, all the homecoming queens and kings, or all the queens are sitting down in the end zone <laughs> of, a, of the side, so they may want to look out. This one here is probably going to go uh, out of the end zone with the wind blowing at, at Gober's back. All right, it's 71 degrees. It is 731, and now we're ready to kick this thing off. Gober gets his foot into it. It's going to be kicked into the end zone, almost out. Like you said, Michael, that wind, that wind is blowing that way, and Gober about kicked it out of the end zone. So, I mean, so, I know Coach knows what he's doing and all, but I think I would have – took the other uh, well maybe when you de defer to the to the second half does that mean the other team gets to pick of what side of the field they want first right because I would have wanted the other yeah, side we'll make, kicking with good. the win kicking with the wind in the second half not against it all right the jackets come center defense out there to start out with so Norville's got two men uh left one one man wide right got a quarterback in the shotgun position got one running back in the backfield Takes a snap, drops back to pass, hits his running back coming out of the backfield. He's got a little bit of a running room. He's going to pick up about five yards on the play. So they go give him, uh, said it's a six-yard gain. That's a good block over there by their, by their wide receiver on one of our defenders. That was just a quick pass to the running back coming out of the backfield. So it's going to be second down and four. Ball setting on the Sonorville 26 yard line. Same formation. Gonna hand off to that running back. He goes right up the middle, barrels his way through for a first down. It's gonna be a first down for Sonorville. They've got a little bit of size on their line out there who's getting Pretty good push on our guys. They're going kind of a hurry up all night long. They don't never huddle up. Got two men split right, one left, and we, we jumped off sides there. Well, as David said last week, if you're going to go off sides, you might as well get your money's worth, and he laid that on his tail. Yep. <laughs> so that's going to be a five-yard penalty on the Jackets. That's going to move the ball up to the 36-yard line. First and five. Same formation. They've got that running back in the backfield. Two receivers split, split right. Oh. And their man has jumped off sides. They're one of these receivers. Well, that's he, one way of getting it back. He didn't uh, get the... The memo. He didn't get the count right, so that's going to back it up. That's a Dean Presley flooring flag on the play. Let's go back it up to the original line of scrimmage, back up to the 31-yard line. So it's going to remain first down and 10 for Sonorville. Quarterback brings them up to the line. Same formation. Quarterback in the shotgun position. Takes a snap, drops back to pass, looking to throw. Rolls out to his right, got some running room coming around this right side, and he's going to pick up about nine yards on the play. I tell you, he was looking for a receiver going down the left side, but well covered over there. But he rolled out to the right, just trying to get away from some of the Rockmart uh, defenders there and saw an opening and got away from them to pick up nine yards on the play. So it's going to be second down and one. I was, hoping Norville. He, I was hoping he'd try to make something happen on this side over here because Anderson was kind of like sitting there just waiting on him to throw it. All right, quarterback in the shotgun position. Going to hand off to that running back going around the left side. He's got enough for a first down. Going to be tackled out there by looks like it's number 28, Nate Davis. 
All right, first down for Sonorville. It's the second first down of the night. Ball sitting on the Sonorville 44 yard line. Quarterback trying to draw us off sides. Changing the play right now up at the line. Drops back in the shotgun position. Got one running back in the backfield. He's going to hand off to him going up the middle. Tried and break it out the right side, left side. Jackets all over that. Tackle there by a host of jackets. I tell you, he got behind his um, he got behind his blockers. There was nowhere to go. He tried to bump it out the left side. And that was a very generous spot on them. Yes. They gave they gave him looks like a couple of yards on that, but uh, but I, I didn't think he made it even to the line of scrimmage on that. So it's going to be second down and eight for Sonorville. I got two running backs in the backfield. All right, quarterback drops back to pass. He throws to one of the running backs coming out of the backfield, being chased down there by Tristan Anderson and brought out of bounds. Uh, about on, he crossed over, he crossed over the the 50-yard line into Jacket territory, and it's going to be brought down at the 48-yard line of Rock Mark. It's going to be third down and two for Sonorville. All right, so the quarterback. They, they do not go to a huddle. Quarterback just gets the signal out there. He's looks like they're going to try to run this right up the middle on us. Got that running back in the backfield. Quarterback score, quarterback keeping, and he Ooh. is hit by number 28, Nate Davis. Put a lick on him. It's got to be a loss of a yard on that. I tell you, Nate came busting through there. He, we read that all, all the way. The uh, quarterback kept the ball and just tried to run it up the middle, so it's going to be fourth down and three, and it looks like they are going for it. Nate came busting through that line and put a hit on that quarterback just as soon as he – just about – he took about one step, and that was it. We probably yep. going to have a pooch kick here by the quarterback. That's exactly what we got. He just – he just takes a snap and kicks it. Ball's going to roll, roll down, and they go going to mark it dead at the jacket 19-yard line. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Silver Comet Furniture, your one-stop shop for every room in the house. Whether it's a new mattress for that perfect night's sleep or a new recliner or sectional to watch the game. We are your local place to update your living space, and we have the best deals in bedding and furniture. Financing is available, no credit needed, free delivery in Polk County. Silver Comet Furniture, 1999 Cedartown Highway in Rotmar, 678-685-4384. Open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. All right, we're back here at Jackets. Hold them. Jackets got it first and 10 on the 19-yard line. Sharp hands off to his uh, running back coming around. That's number 22 for the Jackets. Uh, number 22 is Napoleon Doster. We've been seeing and getting his name called a pretty good bit. Uh, Napoleon picked up about four yards on the play. It's going to be second down and six. Well, Coach did just what he wanted to do. He stopped them on, on their first possession. All right. Hagen Sharp brings, brings his team out. He's got three receivers or two receivers split left. Takes the snap, going to hand off to the uh, number one going around the left side. He trying, he fumbled. And he has fumbled the ball, and so Norville has picked it up. That was Tyree, Tyree McCreary. He was, he was hit, and when he was hit, the ball came loose. And so Sonorville takes over on the – looks like they're going to mark it about the 26, 27-yard line of Rockmark. Tough break for the Jackets. That's the kind of mistakes that we cannot make. Yep. We thought we'd kind of got those, uh, those fumbles under control. All right, so the defense comes back out on the field. Got to step up here and stop them. Snorval comes out the same formation. They got three receivers split right right now. One. Oh, they had they, two or three moving yeah. at one time. Quarterback rolling out, trying to hits his receiver out to the left side. Is going to pick up about 
six yards, seven yards on the play down to the 21. No flag. So it's going to be second down and three. The wind is getting that, that yeah. crowd, Mike. You might have to pull it in some, Michael. All right, so second down and three. Ball sitting on the 21-yard line of Rockmark. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to his running back. He goes around the left side, cuts back inside, and is going to be brought, finally brought down. There's a penalty thrown in the line, around the line of uh, holding, but I, we'll have to see what the call is on this. And that is going to be a Dean Presley flooring flag on the play, and that's a holding on Sonorville. Good break for the Jackets. Back them up. They go back it up from the line of scrimmage, so that's going to put it back to the 31-yard line of Rockmark. No score here. About halfway through the first quarter. Jackets started a drive but fumbled there on about the the second play. So Norville got it back. And so it's second down and about 14 to go. Quarterback drops back looking to pass. Got roll, rolling out to his left. He throws and oh. it's knocked away by Kamal Williams out there, number six. Yep. I tell you, Kamal uh, saw that coming. We had, we had the quarterback under pressure. He was having to roll out to his left. One of his receivers came back up. Had went deep, but came back up trying to, uh, trying to just make something happen. Kamal tipped that ball. I thought Hoggins may have had him in the backfield there because he come busting through the line and was giving chase. All right, so it's third down and 14. It's an Orville. That's not the win there, folks. It's an Orville coming up to the line. And... They have snapped the ball. The quarterback was not ready. He was looking at his uh, running back who was moving to the – had rolled out to the left. He was looking at him. They snapped the ball. So that's going to bring up a fourth down and now 15. No, it's going to be a little bit more than that. It's going to be, be fourth down and about 17. Yep. The ball sitting on the 34-yard line of Rotmart. They've got to get down to the 17-yard line. So it's going to be fourth down. Quarterback's dropping back like he's going to do a quick punt. And that's what he's going to do. It's going to, that ball is going to roll, and they're going to stop it on the three-yard line. Wow. So we didn't put have anybody back there because you, you really couldn't because you had that threat of a pass. So he just kind of just an easy kick down that sideline over there and – and it went out of bounds. They finally stopped it there about the three-yard line. So the Jackets take over first and 10 on the three-yard line, on our own three-yard line, five minutes and three seconds left in this first quarter. Jackets coming out, Hagen Sharp, quarterback. We got we got to move it down the field, guys. Hold yep. on to the ball. We got um, Aiden right, wide right, Tristan Anderson left. It's going to hand off to Tyree McCreary, trying to find a little bit of running room. Finally breaks through and gets up to about the seven-yard line. So that's a gain of about four yards. Go we'll say this to the eight-yard line, so a gain of five yards on the play. So it's going to be second down and five for the Jackets. Give us a little breather room back there. Yeah. Sharp comes to the sideline after um, each play to get the call. We've got number 19, Adrian Samples and Adrian Wright, split right. Aiden Wright. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to Tyree McCreary, looking for some running room, trying to cut it back on the inside. He's not going to have a first down. He is, he's going to be a couple of yards short. He got up to the 11-yard line, so it's going to be third down. It looks like it's going to be two. Third down and two for Rockmart. A lot bringing a little bit of beef. We may just try to pound it for a first down. 
McCreary was trying to get around the right side. Didn't somebody grabbed a hold of his shirt? Yep. All right. We'll hand off to, I believe it's Nate Davis in the That's backfield. The He's got some running room. That's not Nate Davis. That's number 21, Cortez Wright, the ninth grader. And he busts through for a uh, Clay Birch Boutique yellow jacket first down up to the 25-yard line. You're right, Michael. They brought the beef in there to open up that middle. And uh, Cortez Wright just took off up that middle. A good run. Yep. He had a good game last week, too. Yeah, he, That's good to know. He's only a freshman. We've got three more great years out of him probably. All right, so Rommart first and 10. The ball's sitting on our own 25-yard line. And looks like Rommart's going to take a timeout. We've got no score with three minutes and eight seconds left in this first quarter. We'll be back right after this. Broken pipes, flooding, and storm damage are things we hope never happen. But when they do... Elandon Restoration Service should be your first call. They are licensed and insured to handle the project from the drying throughout the repairs. Local, hometown, and family owned. They provide 24-7 emergency water and sewage removal for Polk and surrounding counties. They are an insurance claim specialist and five-star rated on Google. Call them at 470-884-5931. Look them up on the web at www.elandonrestoration.com or Landon Restoration Services on Facebook. At Southern States Bank, it is our mission to provide our customers with an excellent banking experience by engaging customers in a rewarding relationship, delivering products and services tailored to meet their needs. Southern States Bank, 1201 Nathan Dean Parkway in Rockport. Go by for all of your banking needs. All right, we're back here. Jacket's got it first and 10 on our 25-yard line, Sharp. Brings his team out, sends a man in motion, looking to throw the ball, looking down the field, looking for Tristan Anderson, and he hits him at the 50. He's to the 30, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Tristan Anderson. Great pass from Hagen Sharp, right on the money, hit him about the 50-yard line. Tristan Anderson outrun his guy all the way down for a Yellow Jacket McNabb Tire Yellow Jacket touchdown to put the Jackets on the board here in the first quarter with 2.58 left. I don't know that you could have took a drone and dropped that ball over his shoulder any better than that. I tell you, um, Sharp was looking all the way for Anderson. Anderson had a, a little bit of a step on his receiver, but a perfect pass by Sharp. Gober in for the extra point. Look out homecoming, Queens. And there's a snap, the kick is up. And Gober remains perfect on the season. So, so that was a great kick. Yeah, Michael, if he had shanked that a little bit, yes, yes. <laughs> that would have been tough on that, that homecoming yes. crowd yes. down there. Yes, but, sir. Hey, but the Jackets go on the board first here in the first quarter. I tell you, that, that's, that's a good drive by the Jackets. I tell you, we, we were deep on our own in our own territory, started out at the three-yard line. That big run by Cortez Wright that got us that first down, that, that just boosted us a little bit. And then that pass there, a perfect pass from Hagen Sharp. Tristan Anderson had his guy beat, never, never had to stop running, and he just outrun his guy, outran his guy going down the sideline. Great, also, great play, great play. Also, that goes to show the confidence that Coach has in his players. Little fella fumbled. Uh, and, and come back out when they get the, set, get the next possession, first play, hands it right back in his hands, say, hey, look here, son, I know you can do it. You made a mistake. Get your head up, and let's keep going down the field. All right, Gober set to kick off. Wind behind him, so he might kick this over there with a the homecoming court. Kicks it high, deep, and that one's going to hit out of the end zone. So wow. got somebody back there to catch the ball, <laughs> yeah. making sure that it doesn't, doesn't hit them. But uh, – but Gober put that one, Gober's got the wind behind him tonight kicking off, so he put that one out of the end zone. Great kick by Gober. All right, the Jackets defense back on the field. Been playing good. Yep. You know, I would say if that was his uncle kicking the ball, he would aim at him. But I don't believe this young man would do <laughs> that like that. I guess you're talking about Greg. Of course. You shouldn't talk about him while he's not here, Michael. Well, he, he's listening. <laughs> All right, Jackets defense comes back out. Sonorville got one man in the back. Uh, 
one running back in the backfield. He's going to hand it off to him. He's going around that left side, and he is, he is hit by number 54 and brought down. That is Samuel Brown, the senior. I tell you, that was a good play by Samuel. We, that running back, he's been going to that side, and Samuel just, just got on his back and brought him down for a loss of about two yards on the play, so it's going to be second down and 12 for Sonorville. Sonorville's got one receiver wide right, two split left, one running back in the backfield. They ran this, this same thing all night long. Yes, sir. They've actually got three receivers on the left side. Quarterback drops back looking to pass. Pump fakes and sends it deep, but it's, he sent it out of bounds. Almost in grandstand. Well, yeah, well covered down the left side over there by looks like number number nine. I believe it is over there. Adrian Samples running step for step with his man. I tell you, and number four over there, uh, Cannon Jones. Cannon had a great game last week, yep. but uh, ran step for step down that sideline over there. The quarterback, he had nowhere to go but just to throw it out of bounds going down through there. Three receivers split right, one left. Got that running back in the backfield. It's a third down and 12. Takes a snap, drops back, looking to his left, just trying to throw a little screen oh, pass, and it's, it's intercepted by Cannon Jones, and he runs it in for a touchdown. That is a that is his second pick six, two weeks in a row. I tell you what happened. That little that that running back ran out of the backfield. Quarterback ran to his right, tried to throw it back over there, just for a short little pass. We read that all along. He was hit. As soon as he was hit, Cannon grabbed the ball as it popped out and took off down that sideline. That's another one of them McNabb tire touchdowns, ain't it? That's it. A McNabb tire and wheel yellow jacket touchdown. Put the jackets up 13 to nothing here early in the first quarter. Two minutes left in the first quarter. Riley Gober in for the extra point. There's a kick. Kick is up. That's a high kick, but it's good. The jacket's up 14 to nothing here with 205. We'll be back right after this. Get your bronze on. Visit Totally Bronze Tanning Salon at 254 West Elm Street in Rockmart to get that beautiful bronze look. Totally Bronze Tanning Salon has a very clean and cool facility with a safe, well-lit parking area. For a quick tan, they have sunless spray tanning. Call them today at 770-684-3003 for an appointment or go by 254 West Elm Street in Rockmart. Hi. What's that, Evie? Hi. Evie, I'm right here at Tilly's Home Furnaces, 966 Cedartown Highway, looking for you, Evie. Hey, Evie, are you hiding behind the living room set and the recliner? Yes, are you hiding behind them appliances? Yes, Come see us. Tilly's is located at 966 Cedartown Highway. Look us up on Facebook for your daily special. And now more exciting Rockmart Yellow Jackets football on 101.9 Hometown Radio. Are right, we back here? Jackets up 14 to nothing with 205 left in the first quarter. I tell you, the defense played good ball tonight. Yes, sir. All right, Gober set to kick off. He's going to try to put this one in the parking lot. I bet he will. Kicks it high. Going to be into the end zone, about half halfway into the end zone. So not quite as far as the last one, but we'll take it. Let's go bring it out to the 20-yard line. Hey, thanks for tuning in tonight. Our time, temperature, and score. Our time is 7:54. Temperature is 69 degrees. Score is 14 to nothing. Yellow Jackets. Hey, that's your Gilmer Heating and Air. Time, temperature, and score. Hey, it's time to get your heater check for the winter. Give Gilmer a call, and uh, they'll come out and take care of you and get you set for winter. All right, Jackets defense back on the field. Sonorville got one man wide right, one left. He's going to hand off to that running back, finds a little hole on this right side, and it's going to be finally brought down. Looks uh, trying to see who. By number, fit, number 60, number 55 there, and that's Jaden Thompson. He gained a, a little bit on that, four yards. It's going to be second down and six for Sonorville. 
Snorval going to uh, split receivers left, one wide right. Quarterback takes the snap, hands off to his running back going around the left side, and he is brought down by number 28, Nate Davis. Luke, Luke Clay gave him the first hit right there, slowed him up, and then he was finished yeah. up by the yeah, other Luke, two Luke, jackets. Luke Clay almost got a face mask yeah. when he reached out. Yeah. All right, so he picked up a few yards on that. It's going to be third down and two for Sonorville. One thing about Sonorville, they don't have to worry about the game clock. They never go to a huddle, so they're way ahead of that yeah. thing all night long. Quarterback takes the snap, going to hand off to that running back. He's going around the left side. He's got some running room. He's brought down by Nate Davis, but not after – after he gained uh, first down up to the 35-yard line. So, so Sonorville's moving the chains here. Uh, they may have time to get one more playoff. I tell you, uh, that, that little running back is quick. And yes, if, sir. if he gets out into the open, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. But and he tries to hide behind one of his blockers when he goes around that side of her just for a minute, hanging on to his yeah. shirt tail. Yeah, he's a small – He's a small running back, but uh, yeah, he, quick. he gets behind those big tall blockers, and but he is quick. And I think they they might just let the clock run down. If they do, they go. They they can. They got one second difference. And a play clock yep. and a game clock. And that's gonna be the end of the first quarter. Jackets put 14 on the board the first quarter, so we uh, heading into this second quarter. Jackets up 14 to nothing. We'll be right back. You better get used to this weather, State Farm, because I'm trading you to a QB in the Siberian Football League. You can't trade my agent. And we don't cover Siberia. What do you cover? Cars, homes, motorcycles, RVs, boats, golf carts. All right, I get it. Go by Sherman Rawl State Farm Insurance, 122 East Elm Street in Rockmart. What's up, this is Riley. And a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Chicken Club Sandwich is the applewood bacon. It's savory, and then it's also kind of sweet. And I think the combination of bacon with chicken and Colby Jack cheese, it just really knocks it out of the park. Hey, I'm Tanea. A little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Chicken Club Sandwich is the chicken. It's so juicy, it's grilled to perfection. I'm gonna devour this sandwich. Order the Grilled Chicken Club Sandwich on the Chick-fil-A app today. Real guests paid for their testimonials. Have you ever had a bank give you money for anything? Family Savings actually pays me for keeping my money at their credit union. I earn interest of 3% APY on my checking account and 1.5% APY on my savings, just for what I was already doing at my old bank. I even get up to $20 per month ATM fee returns. It's kind of nice to get paid for just using my checking account. Open an Engage account at Family Savings and Credit Union and get rewarded. Family Savings, your best financial friend. Now back to the game on WZOT 101.9. All right, we're back here where Sonorville's got it first and 10. Ball sitting on their own 35-yard line as we start this second quarter. Jackets up 14 to nothing. Quarterback got a running back in the backfield, drops back to pass. He's looking downfield, trying to got a man wide open, overthrows Ooh. him. And I tell you, that was uh, – that man, we had, we had let him get slip out there and uh, no coverage on him. He was wide open if that quarterback just overthrew it. So it's going to bring up a second down and 10 for Sonorville. And all of all of our guys are looking like, Where'd that, who's supposed to get that guy? Yeah, but, he's uh, a big, tall, tall, linky little fella too. All right, so Sonorville got two men split left. And all, they're, yep, two men split left. Two men split right. They like to load up the short side of the field, don't they? One running back in the backfield. Trying to spread us out there. Quarterback rolls out to pass. He's under pressure. Luke Clay trying to get to him. Finally throws it. Hits his guy right in his hands along about the 42-yard line, and he drops it. I tell you, he, he had got that receiver had ran downfield, turned around, turned around and came back. Kamal Williams was over there trying to get back to him, but uh, – he hit him right in his hands and he dropped it. So it's going to be third down and 10 for Sonorville. Quarterback was rolling out under pressure, but he made a good throw over there, even being chased. Yep.
All right. Quarterback. Running back comes out of the backfield. Quarterback drops back to pass. tries to, tries to throw a little short screen pass. They had kind of they had kind of uh, released our line, and they was trying to just set up that screen, but he overthrew his intended receiver. So it's going to bring up a fourth down and ten. And we do see a punter come in. Michael said you said you didn't think that they had a punter, but we do see a punter coming in now. Got Tristan Anderson standing on his own 36-yard line. He's punting with the wind at his back, so anything in the air is going to go a little further than you think. He's loading up the line to come after him. There's a snap. Got the kick away. Anderson having to back up, takes it at his own 25, trying to find some running room around the wall. Coming down the right side, he's to the 40, he's to the 50, and runs over a guy and still moving across the 45 wow. Wow. down to about the 40-yard line. I'll tell you what, we had a pretty good wall set up down this left side for Tristan Anderson. He saw it. He leveled one kid, and then the other one kind of just stood him up and pushed him out of bounds. He never did get brought down. I tell you, I thought he had ran out of bounds about the 45, his own 45-yard line, but but he was uh, he was just tiptoeing down through there and ran over a guy about on the four, on the Sonorville 48-yard line. So the ball's sitting now on the Sonorville 42-yard line. We've got Tristan Wright. Uh, Let's see, Cannon Jones out left. Going to hand off to Tyree McCreary right up the middle. Got a little bit of running room. He's going to break through uh, for about seven yards. It's going to be second down and three for the Jackets. Ball sitting on the 41-yard line or the 36-yard line of Sonorville. Kind of opened up a pretty good hole in there. We had split. We had, we had spread their defense out there. We had several receivers. Got Aiden Wright, Cannon Jones left. And we have, we have moved. We had a false start, so that's going to back us up five yards. Couldn't see who was moving. Must Somebody Must on this side because that defensive end second, really come rushing through there after he moved a little bit. That moves it back up to the 41-yard line, almost back up to the original line of scrimmage. All right, so we got 14. We're up 14 to nothing here in the second quarter. Jackets on the move after a good punt return by Tristan Anderson. Got Tristan Anderson and Gavin Green split left. Cannon Jones and Kamal Williams split right. High snap. Hagen Sharp just going to keep it himself and run along the right side. Pick up of about four yards on the play. Go mark it at the 40, at the 37 yard line. I tell you, it was a high snap, kind of threw off the, the rhythm. Sharp had nothing to do but just to, to tuck it in and uh, move it forward. So it's going to be third down and five for the Jackets. Bring in Wright in the backfield. Got Gavin Green, Kamal Williams, and Adrian Samples out split right. Hand off to number 21, Cortez Wright. And trying to bust it through that line, but we didn't open it up that time. A game of one yard, it's going to be fourth down and four for the Jackets. And I think Coach Parson, he, I think he might be going for it. He sends Sharp back out. I would. Yeah. Way our defense have been has been playing, yeah, I would go. All right, we got uh, Cortez right in the backfield. Hagen Sharp up under center for this one, and they have they they have jumped off sides. Yep. We drew them off sides. That's going to be another Dean Presley floor and flag on the play. That's going to move it up five yards, and, a first and that's down. going to be a 
a uh, Clay Birch Boutique Yellow Jacket first down. Ball setting on the 31-yard line, so. He'd been a shotgun all night long, got up under center, probably gave a loud snap count, and it kind of threw him off. All right, first and 10 for the Jackets. Kamal Williams and Adrian Samples split left. Got Tristan Anderson right. Sharp under center. He's going to hand off to Cortez right, going around the left side, trying to find some running room. Just can't find it there. They're going to bring him down at after about a two-yard gain, three-yard gain. So it's going to be second down and seven. They're going to spot the ball on the 30 on the 28-yard line. It'll be second down and seven for the Yellow Jackets. Sharp brings the play in. Same formation we got here. Got Cortez right in the backfield. Sharp in the shotgun position this time. Takes the snap, going to hand off to Cortez right, and he is hit at the line of scrimmage and knocked back. No gain on the play, so it's going to be third down and seven. I'll tell you, they're closing up that hole that he's been running in, so. All right, third down and seven for the Jackets. Let's see if we go to the air on this one. Look how he emptied out the backfield. Got Anderson on the left side. Going, drops back to pass, looking downfield. He's got Adrian Samples in the end zone for a touchdown. They haven't called it. They finally called it. Touchdown, Jackets. I tell you what, Hagen Sharp dropped back to pass. Adrian Samples, he was in the end zone in no time. I mean, he got down that that sideline pretty quick, and Hagen Sharp hit him right on the pylon down there, right at the goal line, about about one one foot inside of the goal line for a touchdown. Great pass, great p catch by uh, Samples hanging in there to catch that. Kind of kind of had to turn around and catch it over his shoulder. Gober in for the extra point. Here's the kick, the kick is up, and the kick is good. That's going to put the Jackets up 21 to nothing after a McNabb tire and wheel yellow jacket touchdown. We've got 724 left in this half. Hey everyone, Jeff Bailey here with Day's Pre-Owned Supercenter right across from Rockmore High School. Come find out why we're the region champs in the car business. Get a Day's deal once, you're a customer for life. Enjoy the game. Go Jackets. Is your thermostat breaking your wallet each month? The reason could be your home is not adequately insulated. Have the experts at TNT Insulation help put money back in your pocket. Call Tim Montgomery today at 770-684-1887 to schedule an inspection. TNT Insulation can handle all your insulation needs, and they specialize in spray foam insulation. Barnes Insurance Agency offers car, home, health, and life insurance at affordable rates. They offer numerous auto insurance companies so they can get you the best coverage for the lowest rate. They offer tax services year-round. Call today for a free quote. Barnes Insurance Agency, 512 East Elm Street in Rockmart. All right, we're back here. Jackets up 21 to nothing here in this first half. Gober's setting to kick off into the wind, so let's see how far he kicks it this time. Norville got a man standing in the end zone. Gober kicks it high and deep. He's going to take it on the one-yard line, bringing it right up the middle. Got some running room. It's finally brought down at the, about the 28-yard line, 29-yard line. He got a little seam there and busted through there pretty quick. All right, so first and 10 for Sonorville on the – on their own 29 yard line. 21 to nothing here in the first half. Homecoming night, stay with us at halftime. We'll be bringing you all of the festivities from homecoming. We'll send the mic over there to Drew Williams and he'll be announcing the homecoming court. All right, got 
quarterback takes the snap, going to hand off to his running back, going right up the middle, breaks out to the right side, got some running room out there. He's going to be finally brought down about the 35-yard line. I tell you, that running back, he runs through there real quick, and then as soon as he, he gets hit by somebody, he bounces off and uh, changes direction, and he's pretty quick getting out there to gain about three or four more yards after he's hit. So it's going to be second down and five. It's Norville getting their call in from the sideline. Got two receivers split left, one wide right. He's going to hand off to that running back coming around the left side now. Just jumping his way through there, and that's enough for a uh, Sonorville first down. Slicing and dicing his way through. All right, that moves it up to the 42-yard line. Like I said, that little that little running back, he's quick, yep. and and he can move. Changes directions real quick too. Yeah, yeah, he does. All right, quarterback takes the snap, going to hand fake the handoff, throw it out to receiver coming out of the down the left side. And they go pick up about nine yards on that. Big old tight end out there caught that ball. He's a tall yeah. guy. We were expecting a run. It's going to be second down in about a foot. All right, so Norville brings, brings their line up to get set. Quarterback takes a snap, going to hand it off to that running back. Goes along right side, breakthrough of about three yards, but it's enough for a first down. They are now into Rotmark territory on the 46-yard line. While they move the chains, y'all don't forget to stay tuned to the uh, post-game show. Robert Torline and Bill and Busy B back at the studio. So first and ten, we got four, four fifty left in this first half. Quarterback takes a snap, fakes the handoff, throws it to that tight end out on the left side. Finally brought down at the forty yard line. If he'd have handed it off that guy to backfield, he'd been hit and, and tackled for a loss of about four or five yards. Second down and four for Sonorville. Pick up of six yards, it'll be second down and four. That, that big tight end, he, he's breaking out, and yeah. we ain't got anybody covering him when he breaks out. Quarterback takes the snap, hands off to his running back. He is hit immediately at the line of scrimmage and brought down by number 70 for the Jackets. Number 70 is Jaquise McCreary. Flag on and the that's play. going to be a flag on the play, and that's got to be in the line of holding. Yep. And that's going to be a holding on to Norville. Holding so that's going to back them up. That's a Dean Presley floor and flag on the play. Let's go back them up 10 yards from the 40 yard line. So they're going to be right at midfield. So it's going to be second down and about 14 for the uh, Sonorville Phoenix. All right, so first half has been big defensive stand for the Jackets here. Let's hope they can stand them up here one more time before we go in halftime. And two good passes from Sharp for two good touchdowns. Yep. And somebody took a timeout, and I think Sonorville took timeout. a timeout right before that. Hey, we're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back right after this. Lewis Motor Company has moved. The oldest car dealership in Rockmart has a brand new beautiful lot that has expanded their inventory with quality used vehicles. Go buy their new lot at 319 South Piedmont Avenue or call today at 770-684-6694. New facility, expanded inventory, same dealership, same great service, Lewis Motor Company. 
Hello, Jacket Nation. I'm Chris Miller. And I'm Steve Miller. And we are Alvis Miller & Son Funeral Home and Crematory. Our family has been part of Rockmark since 1954, and we have been serving you at the funeral home since 1981. We are proud supporters of our community and Rockmark High School athletics. From our family to yours, go Jackets. Alvis Miller & Son Funeral Home and Crematory. Rockmark's only locally owned and operated home family funeral home. Hey, Jacket Nation. Coach Parson here, head football coach of the Rockmark Yellow Jackets. I want to give a special thanks to our administration, faculty, parents, and community for your support of Rockmark football. Set the standard. All right, we're back here. It's second down and 14. Ball setting right across the 50-yard line on into Sonorville territory. 343 left in this first half. Jackets up 21 to nothing. Got two running backs in the backfield. Quarterback takes a snap, drops back to pass. Looking out to one of the run, uh, running backs coming out of the backfield. And he is going to be finally brought down at the 40-yard line. I tell you, one of their receivers put a pretty good block on one of our guys down there. So it's going to bring, bring up a third down and about four or, no, yeah, about third down and four. I'm trying to see where they're going to mark it. They're going to mark it down to 39-yard line. So it's going to be third down and three for Sonorville. That running back just came out of the backfield and uh, could kind of see that pass coming. Yep, that's a market out there ahead of it. Quarterback drops back to pass, and it's knocked down by number 65. No, that ain't 65. By number 53 for the Jackets, Cody Williams got his hand up on that. They were trying to do that same play. So it's going to be fourth down and three for Sonorville, and I'm sure they'll be going for it. So third down and three, 259 left in this first half. We stop it here, we can get another score. I believe so, yes, sir. All right, got one running back in the backfield, two men split left, two, two men split right. He drops back to pass. We're trying to get to him, throws it over the middle, and he overthrows his man, was wide open, and he yep. overthrew it. So the Jackets take over. First and 10 from their own 39-yard line. Hey, thanks for to Tommy Sanders and all the good folks at Pizza Farm. They yep. supplied us with roasted peanuts again tonight. I tell you, you can't beat them. They're delicious tonight. Yep. So go by and see Tommy and all the, the gang over there. Good food all the time over there. So go by and see them. We appreciate them and what they do for the community and for us. All right, Jackets coming out. We got 254 left in this first half. We got time to score again. Hagan Sharp brings the team out. Got Tyree McCreary in the backfield. Got Anderson right, and I'm trying to see who else is split right. Going to hand off to McCreary. Finds a hole on the right side. Gets through, breaks through across the 50-yard line for a Clay Birch Boutique Yellow Jacket first down. Got into... Uh, Got into Sonorville territory, ball sitting on the 49-yard line. That was a good good hole that was opened up there by our right side for. If we can get down there and score, you know, we get the ball back uh, at the beginning of the second half also. So, Same formation, three guys split right. Tyree McCreary in the backfield. Going to hand, fake the handoff. No, handoff to McCreary. Again, I tell you that was uh, a good fake. I, I, I don't I don't know if that was a fake or a mess up or what, but Sharp thought he was going one side. He didn't. He went the other side. Sharp just turned all the way around and handed it to him on the other side. But he got a good run out of that. It's going to bring up a second down and about about four yards for Rockmart. If that if that wasn't meant to be like that, he did a great it, job not panicking. It looked like it, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it was a, a good a good play. Sharp going to hand it off to McCrary, trying to get some running room there, trying to fight his way through for a first down, and he does. That's another Clay Birch Boutique Yellow Jacket first down. Jacket still got two timeouts, too. McCrary takes it down to the 36-yard line. Board, Minute 46. School board says we got three, but we took one in the first quarter, correct? Yeah, we took yeah. one. Clock's running a minute 39. 
Still time to score here. And yes, we do get the ball back at halftime. We need to we need to put seven more on the board right here. Yes, sir. Sharp drops back to pass, looking down the middle. Fin oh, what a catch. Finally hits his. Didn't have anybody downfield. Finally hits number 16 there, Gavin Green. Just down the sideline there. Good catch by Gavin Green. He, Got, had, he had two choices there, either catch it or eat it, because that was a bullet throw yeah. to him. <laughs> Second down and three for the Jackets. Ball setting on the Sonorville 29-yard line. That stopped the clock. He got out of bounds there. Looks like we got Aiden Wright and Samples split left. Tristan Anderson down the right side going to hand off to uh, Cortez Wright, number 21. They're trying to strip the ball from him. He's going to pick up maybe a yard on that, going to bring it down to the 28-yard line. So it's going to be third down and two for the Jackets. Clock's running. We're under a minute now. We've got to get these plays in pretty quick. I'd air one out to the end zone. Yes, sir. Maybe Anderson down this right side, but he sent him over to the left side. Third down and three. Got McCreary in the backfield. Going to hand off to McCreary. He's through the middle across the... 35 down to the 28-yard line, and Jackets are going to take a timeout. But that's enough for a Yellow Jacket, uh, Clay Birch Yellow Jacket first down. I think they're going to mark it on the 29-yard line. So the Jackets right now have had five first downs this first half. Sonorville had, has had three so far. Jackets up 21 to nothing here with 29 seconds left. Jackets still have one timeout remaining. And they've scored on every possession except that one fumble that they had. All right, so you stay with us at halftime. We'll be bringing you all the festivities from uh, homecoming. I'm going to crown a homecoming queen tonight on a very windy night. Very windy. Of course, the wind might have died down just a little bit, not much, but. All right, Jackets coming out. They got time maybe to run two or three more plays. We can stop the clock. We've got Green, Aiden Wright, and uh, I've got Cannon Jones out split left, Adrian Samples. Quarterback drops back to pass. He's under pressure, rolling out. He's going to have to just tuck it and go with it. And he's uh, get out of bounds. And, oh. and they have thrown a flag on. It's got to be on Sonorville when our they they pushed him out of bounds, and they and he was trying to get up. Their player wouldn't let him up. So I think it's going to be a personal foul on Sonorville. I say now you can't never tell, but right. Uh, Something might have got said. They're marking him out at the 21-yard line. Let's see what the call is. We're still discussing it. Uh, All right, so. Bring in the jury and get it over. Okay, here comes the call from the referee. Personal foul against the Norville. Personal foul against the Norville. That will be a... Uh, 15-yard penalty marked off from the 21-yard line. Is that one of them Dean Presley? That's a Dean Presley flooring flag on the play. They've had their share tonight. They've had five of them tonight. They only run off nine seconds five, off the clock. Five for, five for 45 yards. Well, now they got to talk about something. Well, uh, Coach Parson is saying that they should put some back on the the clock, I think. All right, so they – that moves it down to the 11-yard line. 
Oh, yeah, because that's showing point two seconds. It's, it, we didn't run that much time off the clock. Uh-oh. I guess not. All right. Sharp takes the snap, looking to pass across the – just a little bit too high for Aiden Wright coming across in the end zone. Parker's pass intended for number eight. Mason Allen is incomplete. All right. So we'll bring up second down and 10. They can actually get a first down. <laughs> but if you go get a first down, you might as well just go ahead and get a touchdown out of it. First down is about on the six-inch line. Did you notice we had to change quarterback? Sharp had to go over here underneath the tent for a minute. He just now come out none of that and got back down there with Coach. We are back number three is quarterbacking right now. Parker. I didn't see that, Michael. So Parker must, in at quarterback. Must have heard him on the sideline, when whatever they did to him. Parker drops back looking to pass. Has Cannon wide Jones open. wide open out on the left side for a touchdown. And there's a flag on the play, and that's going to be on Cannon, yep. I'm afraid. Showboat. But, uh, Can't do that. No, he kind of, I think he kind of taunted our, yep. the guy a little bit. So that's a flag on the play. But it is a touchdown. That's right. All right, let's see what they're going to call. I'm, I'm sure it's on us, but that'll be enforced on the kickoff. So the Jackets up 27 to nothing. Well, the good thing about it forced on the kickoff is only nine seconds left in this first half. Yeah. Not much they can do with it, maybe. Riley Gober in for the extra point. That's a McNabb tire and wheel, yellow jacket touchdown. Go by and see Mac, for all your tire needs. Good to see Sharp back in the game, too, holding. Personal foul. No, it's against the Norville. Personal foul against the Norville. So they must have, uh, that guy must have said something right. to Cannon over there. Right. But Cannon kind of had his finger yeah, up at that guy. He did, he did. That's why I thought it was going to be on us. But That and the way he went in his end zone backing and dancing and that's All okay. right, so Riley Gober in for the extra point. Nine seconds left in the first half. There's the snap. The kick is up. And the kick is good. So that's going to put the Jackets up 28 to nothing here. Is there something wrong with the clock? Because you let counts down. Tense. I think when they had to add that back on, I think that's when it got all screwed up. So. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so uh, nine seconds left in this first half. It's been all rock mark, 28 to nothing. You know, we really only had one flare up, I guess you could say, and that was the fumble. Uh, we've kind of disciplined ourselves, and they had many, many penalties. Uh, had that, what, one holding call. No, that wasn't against us. That's against Sonorville. So we, we yeah, Sonorville had a good first half. Sonorville, hand. and that that will tack on another penalty. That's another Dean Presley Florin flag on the play with them. So that puts them at six on the night. Yep. And Gobert's going to get the kick for his 40 from from their 45. That's it's 60 yards worth of penalty on them. So it's you know, wow, that adds up after a while, right? All right, so he's kicking against the wind and wind in his face, so he should still be able to put it in the end zone. And he kicks it all the way out of the end zone. All right. So still nine seconds left. All right, so right before half, when we go into halftime, we're going to we'll take a <coughs> excuse me a short commercial break. We're going to get the mic over there to Drew Williams and let him uh, do all the festivities from for you tonight. Stay tuned. And, uh, I wish somebody quit shooting that gun up here. Okay, Michael. <laughs> we're dropping stuff on this metal. That's what it sounds like, though. I keep looking back. All right, so Snorville <laughs> on their own 20-yard line. They've got nine seconds left. Let's see what they do here. 
They go hand it off to that running back who is hit in the backfield and brought down, and that's going to be that's going to be it. And uh, we're going to get set up here. That's going to be the end of the first half. The Jackets, 28 to nothing, here in the first half. It's been all Rotmart. Rotmart will get the ball back when we come out at halftime. So we will, we're going to get everything set up here. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back to have this uh, all set up for you. At Southern States Bank, it is our mission to provide our customers with an excellent banking experience by engaging customers in a rewarding relationship, delivering products and services tailored to meet their needs. Southern States Bank, 1201 Nathan Dean Parkway in Rockmore. Go by for all of your banking needs. Broken pipes, flooding, and storm damage are things we hope never happen. But when they do, Elandon Restoration Service should be your first call. They are licensed and insured to handle the project from the drying throughout the repairs. Local, hometown, and family owned. They provide 24-7 emergency water and sewage removal for Polk and surrounding counties. They're an insurance claim specialist and five-star rated on Google. Call them at 470-884-5931. Look them up on the web at www.landingrestoration.com or Landing Restoration Services on Facebook. All right, we're back here getting ready to, for the start of homecoming. The jacket's up 28 to nothing here. And uh, as soon as... They get set and give the word. We're going to turn it over to Drew Williams over there. Welcome to Homecoming 2024 at Rotmart High School. Join me in welcoming the 2024 Homecoming Court.
We will now introduce to you Rutmart High School's 2024 homecoming court. Freshman representative Landra Hope Kane. Landra is joined on the field by her mother Kimber Fields and her brother Jace Fields. Landra is a member of the RHS cheer team and RHS honor classes. Freshman representative Landra Hope Kane. Freshman representative Bailey Leanne Chandler. Bailey is joined on the field by her mother, Amy Chandler, and her grandmother, Lynn Wingo. Bailey is a member of the RHS cheer team, RHS honors classes, and is ranked in the top 10 of her class. Freshman representative, Bailey Leanne Chandler. Sophomore representative, Amazi Shania Christopher. Amazi is joined on the field by her parents, Terrell and Christy Christopher. Amazi is a member of the RHS varsity volleyball team. Sophomore representative, Amazi Shanae Christopher. Sophomore representative, Olivia Reese Wooten. Olivia is joined on the field by her parents, Deidre and Ashley Wooten. Olivia is a member of the Pope Youth Leadership Program. Sophomore representative, Olivia Reese Wooten. Junior representative, Lily Madeline Griffin. Lily is joined on the field by her mother and stepfather, Andrea and Andy Harris. Lily is a member of National Honor Society, Skills USA, and the RHS volleyball team. Lily also has all A's and is ranked in the top 10 of her class. Junior representative, Lily Madeline Griffin. Junior representative, Maddie Ann Renee Sanders. Maddie Ann is joined on the field by her parents, Rodney and Rosanna Sanders. Maddie Ann is a member of Student Council, Superintendent's Advisory Council, RHS Tennis, and the RHS Softball Team. Maddie Ann has been ranked in the top 10 of her class for the past two years and is currently serving as class vice president. Junior representative, Maddie Ann Renee Sanders. Senior representative, McKinley Shea Forsyth. McKinley is joined on the field by her parents, Jamie and Erica Brown. McKinley is a member of Chick-fil-A Leader Academy and the RHS varsity softball team. McKinley has also volunteered at Polk County Special Olympics the past two years. When asked who is someone who has been influential in her life, McKinley said, my mom. Even during times of struggle, my happiness was always her number one priority. She has shown me that her, your past does not define you no matter how hard it was. I've learned how to not only be strong, but also what it means to be loved unconditionally. She never fails to show up for me and remind me of my worth. Without my mom, I wouldn't be where I am today. My mom is my best friend, shoulder to cry on, biggest supporter, and role model. I hope to be half the mom she is one day. Thank you for everything you've sacrificed for me. I love you, Mom. Senior Representative McKinley Shea Forsyth. Senior Representative Kaylee Anna Huckabee. Kaylee is joined on the field by her parents, Christy Elliott and Brian Huckabee.
Kaylee is a member of National Honor Society, RHS basketball team for two years, and the RHS varsity softball team for four years. During her time on the softball team, Kaylee was the 2022 Jacket of the Year, 2022 Pitcher of the Year, and 2023 Pitcher of the Year, and selected as part of the 2023 Second Team All-State. When asked about her future goals and plans, Kaylee said, I plan to attend Presbyterian College to further my academic and athletic career while pursuing a degree in the medical field. Senior Representative Kaylee Anna Huckabee. Senior Representative Cheyenne Sahara Jordan. Cheyenne is joined on the field by her, her parents, Samika Jones and Travis Jordan. Cheyenne is a member of National Honor Society, Student Council, Pep Squad, RHS yearbook staff, RHS track team, and the RHS softball team. Cheyenne has lettered all four years in both of these sports and ranked in the top 10 in her class. When asked who is someone who has been influential in her life, Cheyenne said, my mother. She is truly the strongest person that I know. She is the most caring and considerate person in my life. I will always love and cherish her for being the best mom anyone could ever ask for. She is my reason why. I love you, Mom. Senior Representative Cheyenne Sahara Jordan. Senior Representative Olivia Susan Leggett. Olivia is joined on the field by parents Samantha and Paul Leggett. Olivia is a member of the National Honor Society, Student Council, and the RHS Mock Trial Team. When asked who is someone who has been influential in your life, Olivia said, my parents have been the most influential people in my life. My mom is the strongest person I know. She's always there for me, reminding me that no matter what I go through, she's right beside me. My dad is incredibly hardworking. For the past 17 years, he's dedicated himself to giving me everything I want and has always supported every decision I've made. I wouldn't be who I am today without my amazing parents. Senior Representative Olivia Susan Leggett. Senior Representative Gabrielle Ray Merzifka. Gabrielle is joined on the field by her mother, John Smith. Gabrielle has received many awards for ap academic excellence during her time at RHS and is currently ranked in the top 10 of her class. When asked who is someone who has been influential in her life and, and how, Gabrielle said, my mom. Although we have faced many challenges together, she has experienced 11 of them all on her own. Her efforts have made me question if I am deserving of her love. She has always shown up and continuously acknowledged what has mattered most to me. To all the single parents here, your inclination shall never go unnoticed. Your biggest achievements will always be your tiny army you've built immensely all by yourself. I would like to proudly display your willingness tonight. Senior Representative Gabrielle Ray Merzifka. Senior Representative Jayla Cherie Ware. Jayla is joined on the field by her parents, Jennifer Highsmith and Casey Ware. Jayla is a member of National Honor Society, student the Superintendent's Advisory Council, Student Council, Skills USA, and the RHS soccer team for three years. Jayla received the Georgia Certificate of Merit and was also elected as Miss Polk County. When asked who is someone who has been influential in her life, Jayla said, my parents have been influential in my life. 
They always go above and beyond for me. My mom has always been my rock and has always been my, by my side through everything. She inspires me to be the best version of myself. My dad is my biggest supporter and has always made me feel like I am worthy and loved. Senior Representative Jayla Cherie Ware. Now we would like to welcome to the field our principal, Dr. Bo Adams, and our 2023 homecoming queen, Zori Williams, who will present the crown to our queen. Now our first runner up, Miss Jayla Ware. And now the 2024 homecoming queen for Rotmart High School is Miss Cheyenne Jordan. Please join me in congratulating our homecoming court one more time. All right, there you have it, folks. Congratulations to Once again. Cheyenne Jordan, the homecoming queen for 2024. And congratulations to uh, Jayla Ware for the runner-up. And congratulations to all of these girls down here who are part of the homecoming court, who was voted on by uh, their peers in their grade level. But uh, congratulations to them. And we're trying to give you a few more shots there of, of Cheyenne. Cheyenne's a good softball player. And uh, and uh, she is, uh, congratulations to her and her family there. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're going to do the alma mater here in just a second. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back here, and we'll get this second half kicked off. Jackets up 28 to nothing. This is Martin Truex Jr. and as a NASCAR Cup Series champion, I love one-stop shopping. When I need fresh tires or fuel during a race, my pit crew takes care of everything. Off the track, I have an auto owner's independent agent. They handle all my insurance in one place, car, home, life, and business. Get your own pit crew and find a local agency with auto owner's insurance. Contact the Nathan Dean Agency, 1105 North Piedmont Avenue in Rockmart. The Nathan Dean Agency has been offering integrity and great service since 1975. They offer all types of personal insurance, including individual annuities, boat and watercraft, auto insurance, condo insurance, and individual disability. Save money on business insurance, including apartment building owners, bonds, builder's risk, and church insurance, to name a few. Call the Nathan Dean Agency today at 770-684. 7851 for a free quote. Go see them at North Piedmont Avenue in Rock Mart. This is the Yellow Jackets Halftime Report brought to you by the Nathan Dean Agency, North Piedmont Avenue in Rock Mart. Martin Truex Jr. and as a NASCAR Cup Series champion, I love one-stop shopping. 
When I need fresh tires or fuel during a race, my pit crew takes care of everything. Off the track, I have an auto owner's independent agent. They handle all my insurance in one place. Car, home, life, and business. Get your own pit crew and find a local agency with auto owner's insurance. Contact the Nathan Dean Agency, 1105 North Piedmont Avenue in Rockmart. This is the Yellow Jackets Halftime Report, brought to you by the Nathan Dean Agency, North Piedmont Avenue in Rockmart. All right, thanks for tuning in tonight. We don't have any scores coming in right now, but um, a, lot, a lot of places, they were called off because of the weather. But, uh, but here tonight, the Jackets up 28 to nothing. Tonight, we crowned our homecoming queen, Cheyenne Jordan. Jayla Ware, runner-up. Since 1916, a lot of independent agents have recommended auto owner's insurance. And a lot of parents have taken that recommendation to heart. So have a lot of their children, and grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Auto owner's insurance thanks all those who have put their trust in us. And all the generations who will. Contact the Nathan Dean Agency, 1105 North Piedmont Avenue in Rockmart. The wait is over. It's game time on WZOT 101.9. This is Rock Mart High Football. Presented by Garrett Land Company, Mitchell Chiropractic, Mary Miller State Farm, Taylor Transport, Blossman Propane Gas and Appliance, Rake Straw Tire and Automotive, Clint Brock and the Rock Mart Raceway, Live Wire Surplus, Smith's Land Clear, Jennifer Holtzy and the Lankford Insurance Firm. John and Debbie Forsyth of Merle Norman Cosmetics and Boutique. Culver Exterminating Company. All right, we're back here. Uh, I do have some scores that came in. Temple up 21 to three over Bremen. Pepperell up 14 to seven over Darlington. Heard County up 35 to 15 over uh, Harrelson County. Calhoun up 10 to nothing over Adairsville. Dade County up six to nothing over Armurchy. Got 20, uh, Chatuga and Gordon Lee tied up at 28, and Christian Heritage up 27 to nothing over Coosa. And, and here at the Rock, 28 to nothing. 28 to nothing. We don't have an interview with Coach Parson right now because none of us up here are in shape to run down there and get an interview and get back up here. So David is the one who normally <laughs> does that. I'm in shape, sir. Hey, Round is a shape, circle. Yeah. David's normally the one who does that, and uh, – <laughs> But, uh, but we were bringing you the halftime activity there. So, um, But here are the Jackets. It was all Jackets' first half. Jackets won the toss, deferred to the second half. So Jackets will be receiving the kickoff here. And uh, wind still, still blowing pretty good. Our time, temperature, and score. Our time is 8.53. Uh, 69 degrees, jackets up 28 to nothing. That's brought to you by Gilmer Heating and Air, your time, temperature, and score. Give them a call today and get set for winter. Get your uh, heating unit checked so that when it does finally get cold, yeah. you'll be set to go. And uh, of course, you might might need to come out and check the air conditioner the way it's been going. So, uh, well, I did <laughs> see we, we're back at 83 and 84 degrees midweek next week. So, so you still gonna have to run that air. We'll get him to come out and check the air. Just to, and get him, get him to get you set for the winter if it ever gets here. But hey, the Jackets uh, get ready to receive this kickoff. Now next week, just um, a reminder: we will be off next week. That is an off week for the Jackets. And then we'll be back in action uh, with North Cobb Christian here at home. That's going to be a big matchup. That's probably going to be the, the game that's going to decide who's going to be number one in the region. Because North Cobb Christian, they're pretty good, and they're sitting there at the top with the Jackets. All right. Getting ready to – Sonorville getting ready to kick off here. The ball blew off the tee. Blew off the tee there. We've got uh, Tristan Anderson standing back at his own eight yard, no, no, he's moved up to the 15 yard line. That's a short kick. It's gonna take a bounce and Sonorville got it. I tell you, our guys just kind of stood there and watched it land. 
I don't understand, but uh, but he kicked it straight up in the air. Our guys just kind of stood there and didn't uh, didn't even make an attempt for it. All you could see was some Norville players around it, and so they're going to get the ball to start off with. Not a good start. Not a good start. They're going to mark it on the 36-yard line. Rock mark. I tell you, they didn't. Our guys didn't even make an attempt. Everybody just stood there and watched it. It's not a punt, guys. All right, so Sonorville brings their, their guys out. Hands off to that running back going around the left side, trying to bounce outside, but brought down after about a yard gain. Go mark him down on the 35-yard line, so second down and nine for, for Sonorville. I know we've had a busy last couple of weeks, but we're going to have a coach's show this Monday night. Do we know? I don't know. <laughs> All right, three receivers split right, one left. Running back in the backfield, quarterback drops back, rolls out to his right. He's looking back to his left. Got a man going down the sideline, and he, he hits him. Going down the sideline, I believe that we might have intercepted it. I'm waiting on a, waiting waiting on on a call. We come up with the ball. I tell you, it, they gonna mark it complete. It was it was wow. that running back that came out of the backfield. He took off down the the left side. The quarterback was looking back all the way, going to throw it to him, and and we were right on him. But it was a perfect pass thrown, and he is down at the one yard line. So it's gonna be first and goal for Sonorville. We'll hand off to that running back. He is hit. Maybe a loss of a yard. He is hit immediately when he gets the ball. So we were expecting that right up the middle. All right, so it's going to be second down and goal. Makes a snap, rolls out to pass, looking Hits a man in the end zone wide open for a touchdown. So very quickly, Sonorville comes out here after a, a mistake by the Jackets on the kickoff, and they score very quickly here. All right, so kicker in for the extra point. Getting set. There's the snap. Kick is up, and the kick is good. That's going to put it 28 to 7. That should have never happened because we should have never let that kick off. And we need to be prepared. We need to tell our guys somebody's got to catch it this time. Right. But uh, a very costly mistake by the Jackets. It's cost a touchdown here. So the Jackets deferred to the second half. Short, high kickoff, fielded by Sonorville. No attempt by us to catch the ball, so. So let's see what, uh, see what we do this time. I imagine it's gonna be another short kick like that. Yeah, kick the ball high, and you know, he's, he's kicking into the wind. So if you get it up in there, it's just gonna hold it up there for a little bit. Well, he's kind of keeping it away from Tristan Anderson back there who's standing on his own 18-yard line. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Prosser is going to address that this week for sure. All right. So Norville set to kick off here. A little over 10 minutes left in this third quarter. High kick again. Somebody get up there and get it. And it looks like Aiden Wright is going to get it. And I don't I don't I don't know if he called a fair catch or what. But 
I don't think he called a fair catch, but he was hit immediately. Well, if he, if he didn't call a fair catch, then he should still be going because he never hit the ground and didn't go out of bounds. That's what I thought. <laughs> and I think that's what the coaches thought over here, yeah. too, because he never was knocked out of bounds. But the ball's sitting on the Yellow Jacket 36-yard line is where we're going to start. Hagen Sharp brings out uh, the offense. Got Tristan Anderson and Aiden Wright split left. Looks like we got uh, Cortez Wright in the running back position. High snap over the head of Sharp. Cortez Wright almost was able to pick it up, but Sharp picked it up and just ran it back close to the line of scrimmage. Good heads up play by by Sharp there, but right too for he he's tried picking the ball up, but yeah, Cortez it went over it went over Sharp's head and Cortez Wright tried to grab it and go with it, but he couldn't pick it up off the ground. Same formation here. Sharp takes the snap, gonna hand off to Cortez Wright, going right up the middle, breaks through for about six yards. It's going to take it up to the 41 yard line. So it's a gain of five yards. So it's going to be third down and five for the Jackets. Right coming out. Uh, looks like Tristan McCreary coming in. You know, I don't want to sound like race or anything like that. We don't need to let the wheels fall off. We need to get them over here and tighten the lug nuts up on these guys and get busy. All right, I we're mean, not at the racetrack, Michael. Well, so. I'm just saying, we, we might let the wheels fall off this thing. Jones and uh, Aiden Wright split right. Sharp takes a snap, going to hand it off to McCreary going up the middle, face and that's got to be a face mask. No I, call. I cannot believe they brought him down by the face mask. Everybody up here in the stands saw it. Ray Charles seen it. But uh, – that's enough for a one-source solution, home solution, Yellow Jacket first down. That brings it up to the Jacket 49-yard line. Yeah, they brought him down by the face mask, yes, and yes, uh, I, I can't believe they didn't throw a flag on that. But they might have saw something that we didn't see. But All right, so got Anderson and Anderson and Green out split left going to hand off to McCreary going right up the left side breaks through uh, still on his feet to the 35 and and they if he fumbled the ball they need to they should have blown that ball dead earlier but he didn't that's another one source home solution yellow jacket first down that brings it down to the 34 yard line 33 yard line of of uh Sonorville. Of Sonorville. I tell you, that was a good run, about a 20-yard run there by by uh, McCreary. Same formation. Takes a snap, going to hand off to McCreary. No, fakes it out to the right side, hits Cannon Jones out on the right side. Enough for an eight-yard gain. I tell you, I thought he had handed it off to McCreary again, but Hagen Sharp just rolled out to his right, had Cannon Jones out there, hit him for an eight-yard gain, so it's going to be second down and two for the Jackets. The ball sitting on the 25-yard line of Sonorville. We'll put Wright back in the game. He's going to be in the backfield. We got Aiden Wright, Tristan Anderson, and I believe that's Green out split left. High snap again. Hands off to uh, Cortez Wright. He's a gets maybe a yard. I tell you, it's that, that high snap is yeah. throwing off the rhythm, and they've got to get that snap right on the money because uh, Wright had to, uh, Sharp had to reach up and grab it, and by the time he came down with it, Cortez Wright was having to just hold up a little bit before he, before he busted through the line there. Gain of one, so it's going to be third down and one for the Jackets. Sharp's almost having to jump for the ball. Same formation. Takes a snap high that time, gives it off to Cortez. Right, he breaks around the right side. He's to the 10, he's to the 5, and that's finally brought collar. down. And he's going to be. Hey, they a, finally called a horse collar. And that's a flag on the play, and that's a horse collar. 
It's got to be a horse collar. If it ain't, this place I would go crazy because that was open field, just snatched him down from, from behind with his top of his shoulder pads. All right. They brought him down on the four-yard line. So it's going to be half the distance of the goal. But that is another Dean Presley floor and flag on the play. All right, so that's going to mark it on the two-yard line. That was a good run there by Wright. That's another one-source home solution, Yellow Jacket first down. And another high snap to Anderson, trying to break it around the right, the left side, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds at the two-yard line. That was a um, that was a direct snap to Anderson. Still a high snap, I tell you. And that's what that was on the last play, is a high snap coming back to them, and it's throwing off their rhythm when they start moving forward. They're having to they're having to reach up and grab the ball and then come down and get set to run. You know, Anderson's got a little bit of height on Sharp. If Sharp would have been there on that one, it might have went over Sharp's head. Yeah. All right, got Anderson back. Direct snap to him, going right up the middle through there for a yellow jacket. McNabb, Tyron, Will, touchdown. Tristan Anderson, a two-yard touchdown run, just got behind his blockers there, those big guys right on the front. Pretty much just walked in there for a Yellow Jacket touchdown. So Jackets go up 34 to seven here before the extra point. We move the ball down the field very well. Just kind of just ran it straight at them. All right, Gober in for the extra point. Got that siren going. Here's the snap. The kick is up and the kick is good. So that puts the Jackets up. 35 to 7. We'll be back right after this. For decades, Rockmart has been fortunate to have a grading company with a stellar reputation and a record of providing the finest in grading and hauling services. Jerry Ferguson has been doing grading that is second to none in the Rockmart area for many years and continues today. Give Jerry or Dana Ferguson a call at 770-655-3440 or 770-684-1671. For grading, hauling, septic systems, driveways, or clearing, call Ferguson Construction. All right. We're back here. Jackets up 35 to 7. 6.55 left in this third quarter. Riley Gover getting ready to kick off. Wind has kind of shifted. Now it's blowing. It's blowing to the right, blowing toward the middle school over there. Over backs up to kick. Gets his foot in it. That's going to go in the end zone. And out of the back of the end zone. Out of the back. <laughs> hey, we will be having a coaches show Monday night. I just got the word on that. It's going to be down at the Methodist Church in Rockmart. Hey, come out and be part of that. We'll have we'll have a coach in there and some players and a uh, good meal in there. Come in there. I think it's $12 to eat. Brought to you by JC Snack Shack Catering. So, so come on in and be part of that. We'll start at 6.30 on Monday night. I did hear Steve is going to be signing autographs. All right. All right, so Sonorville brings out two receivers split left, one right. Got a running back in the backfield. Running back pulls out of the backfield. Quarterback hits him with a pass, and we're going to have a flag on the play, and it's probably going to be a holding since it's right at the line of scrimmage in the area of holding. Let's see what the call is. And it's going Ooh. to be a uh, face mask on us. No, it's going to be um, illegal hands to the face. Oh. It's illegal hands of the face on the quarterback up there, so that's on the jackets. So that was kind of crazy because. So, the, so they, they've seen the hands in the face, but they didn't see the and, snatching of the face mask. And the guy that threw the flag was way back here. The guy standing back there next to it didn't even call it. Wow. 
So that's going to be a 15-yard penalty against the Jackets. That brings the ball up to um, – that's going to bring it to the 41-yard line. They tacked that on at the end of the run, so it's going – that's why they moved it up so far. Well, now they go back it up to the 36-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 from the 36-yard line. So that gave them a first down. So Norville empties the backfield. Quarterback takes the snap, drops back to pass. He's hit his tight end over here on the right side. Gain of about five yards, four yards on the play, so it's going to be second down and six. That, uh, that big tight end just gets out here, gets open about every time. He's a good-sized kid. Clock running 618 here in the third quarter. Jackets up 35 to 7. Thanks for tuning in tonight, wherever you, wherever you may be listening from. All right, one running back in the backfield. Quarterback takes a snap, drops out, looking to hit that. Running back coming out of the backfield and uh, he Thank drops you. it. I think he heard footsteps, right? Was right there on him, wasn't he? Yep. I tell you, you could see that play coming. Anytime that, anytime that, um, that running back drops out to the outside like that, he's going to hit him uh, with a pass. That little fellow, when he's got some open field in front of him, he can he can hurt you. He's got a lot of speed. All right. Third down and six. Hey, the band's coming this week to uh, to the coaches show. All right, so Norville's gonna take a timeout. So we're gonna take a quick timeout. Jack, it's up 35 to seven. Silver Comet Furniture, your one-stop shop for every room in the house. Whether it's a new mattress for that perfect night's sleep or a new recliner or sectional to watch the game. We are your local place to update your living space and we have the best deals in bedding and furniture. Financing is available, no credit needed, free delivery in Polk County. Silver Comet Furniture, 1999 Cedartown Highway in Rotmar, 678-685-4384. Open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Get your bronze on. Visit Totally Bronze Tanning Salon at 254 West Elm Street in Rockmart to get that beautiful bronze look. Totally Bronze Tanning Salon has a very clean and cool facility with a safe, well-lit parking area. For a quick tan, they have sunless spray tanning. Call them today at 770-684-3003 for an appointment or go by 254 West Elm Street in Rockmart. The right price for the right protection? It exists, and Rockmart Allstate agent Bree Brown can help you get it. Contact her for your free quote. All right, we're back here. 5.57 left in this third quarter. Jackets up 35-7. to seven. Got a third down and six for Sonorville. The ball's sitting on their own 40-yard line. Quarterback empties the backfield. Takes a snap, drops back to pass under pressure, having to roll out. We're trying to chase him down. He's going to have to just throw it up, and he throws it out of bounds over there. Good coverage downfield by all of our guys. I think Luke Clay was, uh, I think the person they was trying to throw to, Luke Clay had him over there defending him very well. So that's going to bring up a fourth down and six for Sonorville. He had rolled out to his left, and we just kept applying the pressure over there. I think they're going to go for it, Mark. They've got the running uh, back and quarterback still in. Well, it's probably. Pooch kick. He's probably going to drop back and kick it, I would think. I don't know. He, I, we I mean, this, deep. Th this, this far into the game, you might as well go for it. And they are going to go for it. Three seconds on the play They're going to well. try to draw us off is what they're trying to do. That's all sides. I mean, it's so they're uh, gonna, they're gonna take game. They took another timeout. Oh, they they were trying to draw us off sides, and that didn't happen. Good job, guys, to just sit there. Yep. All right, let's take one quick break, and we'll be right back. 
What's up? This is Riley. And a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A grilled chicken club sandwich is the applewood bacon. It's savory, and then it's also kind of sweet. And I think the combination of bacon with chicken and Colby Jack cheese, it just really knocks it out of the park. Hey, I'm Tanea. A little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A grilled chicken club sandwich is the chicken. It's so juicy. It's grilled to perfection. I'm going to devour this sandwich. Order the grilled chicken club sandwich on the Chick-fil-A app today. Real guests paid for their testimonials. Hey, Jacket Nation. Coach Parson here, head football coach of the Rockmark Yellow Jackets. Set the standard. All right, set the standard. That's what Coach Parson has said since he's been here. And he set a pretty good standard here for these teams. So it's fourth down and six. Got a running back in the backfield and quarterback in the shotgun position. Quarterback takes the snap, drops back, looks out to his right, hits that tight end, and he is hit immediately and is going to be brought down Good for job. about a yard gain. I tell you, that was big number 65 that got a hold of him. That's Jam Jamiracle Hodges. I tell you, Jamiracle has stepped up as the season has went on and became a major force on this defense. So the Jackets take over on downs. At the ball setting on the 42 yard line of Sonoraville. So first and 10 for the Jackets. All right, let's put another score on here and have a running clock the fourth quarter. Sharp in at quarterback. Got uh, Wright in the backfield. Go hand it off to Wright, going, trying to go up the middle. He's going to get through for about two yards. That was number 22 back there. 22. Yeah, it was number 22 back there. I thought it was right. I saw the two. That is uh, Napoleon Doster. Tackle made by number 44, Will Patterson. Pick up a two yards. It'll be second down. All right, second down and eight for the Jackets. Should have got it there. Sharp takes the snap. Hands it to Doster in the backfield, and it, he's going to be brought down. I tell you, there's some miscommunication going on there between Sharp and Doster. Do, uh, Sharp turned around, will hand it off to the right side. Doster went to the left side. Sharp had to just turn all the way back around and hand it to him. So it's going to be third down and eight. The second time that's happened like that tonight. First time worked out okay, but that time wasn't so good. Uh, no gain on the play. We don't need to stall here. But like you said, we need to score and get that running clock. Got Cortez right in the backfield. Sharp takes the snap, fakes the handoff to right. He's rolling out to his right, throws it, hits Anderson on the run. And he's going to be brought out of bounds on the 26-yard line. That was Tristan Anderson on the catch. Tristan came all the way across, running a pattern all the way across the field. Sharp just rolled out to his right, and that was enough for a one-source home solution. Yellow Jacket first down. Ball now on the 26-yard line, first and 10 for the Jackets. That was a good pass. Hit him in stride there. Yeah. Cortez right in the backfield. He's going to hand it to right. Going right up the left side. Just Toting two guys with him. And that's going to be close to another yellow jacket first down. Somebody got a free piggyback ride. I didn't ever see him hand off no tickets. At the fair. And that's going to be a, they're going to say it's second down. No, they're going to give it a, I thought it is enough for a first down. So that's another yellow jacket, one source home solution, yellow jacket, first down. Ball sitting on the 20, on the 16 yard line. Cortez Wright just busted through that line, got somebody on his back and toted him about five yards down the field. Backfield empty. Man comes in motion, going to have Gavin Green coming around the left side, and he's going to be brought down about at the six-yard line. So Gavin Green, 
seeing a little bit more of him as the year goes on. Gavin Green is a ninth grader. It's going to be second down and about a foot, Mark. You're very close to another so first down. We'll be seeing Gavin Green for a few years. Michael, I think you go at pull it in some more. Yeah, the wind's picking up here. All right, McCre Tyree McCreary in the backfield. Sharp takes a snap. McCreary going through the left side, busting Ooh. through down to the one-yard line. That's going to be another one source, home solution, Yellow Jacket first down as we almost saw Tyree McCreary dive over into the end zone, but he was just upended right there at the end. First and goal from the one. Got McCreary in the backfield. Go hand it off to him again. Let him get this score. Hand it off to McCreary, and McCreary. Oh, another that, face mask. That, he grabbed him by the face mask and brought him down, and there was no flag. That's the second time tonight that they have tackled him by the, by the face mask. Everybody up here in the stand saw that. I think everybody in the, in the opposing stands over there saw that. He was he was on his way in. They grabbed him by the face mask, brought him down. Mm. That's unbelievable that you that you can't see that. And this guy standing down here right in front of it. Mm. All right, one more time. Sec, second down and go. We'll hand it to him again. And he is in for a score. Tyree McCreary. Uh, one yard run in for a, for a McNabb tire and wheel yellow jacket touchdown. Put the jackets up 41 to seven. We got a minute 29 seconds left in this first, in this third quarter. Riley Gober in for the kick. Got that siren going. Something's happening. Yeah. Got, All right. Yellow jacket's on fire. Riley Gober gets set. Here's the snap, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. Jackets up 42 to seven here late in the third quarter. And we'll take a quick break and be back uh, for the kickoff. You better get used to this weather, State Farm, because I'm trading you to a QB in the Siberian Football League. You can't trade my agent. And we don't cover Siberia. What do you cover? Cars. Homes. Motorcycles. RVs. Boats. Golf cars. All right, I get it. Go by Sherman Rawl State Farm Insurance, 122 East Elm Street in Rockmart. If you live in the South, two things are almost certain. Your outside activities will be threatened by unwanted mosquitoes, and any untreated wood is highly susceptible to termite damage. Harrelson Termite can help you get a handle on your uninvited invaders before they take over. They have over 100 years of termite and pest control experience and are the largest pest control company in Pope County. Give them a call today for a termite inspection or to treat your yard for mosquitoes before your next outdoor event. They also treat other pesky insects like bed bugs, ants, roaches, wasps, and hornets. Harrelson Termite in Rockmine. Call 770-684-1488 to schedule an appointment. All right, we're back here and Gober getting ready to kick off and uh, the wind blew off the tee. So that allowed us to get that commercial finished. <laughs> and, uh, and so that that, that was, uh, he might have to hold it on there. That yeah, the they're, bringing in them, they're bringing in someone to Gavin hold Gavin Green for coming in to hold, or Lincoln's, no, Gavin Green coming in to hold for him. I tell you, it's, uh, the wind has picked up a pretty good bit here. Gober steps back, steps it off, getting ready to kick. Crowd's hung in here good. And there he has kicked it into the end zone, so that's going to be, they go bring it out to the 20-yard line. Like I said, the crowd is hung in here tonight. A good crowd here for homecoming. Uh, you know, a lot of times at homecoming, a lot of people leave, but uh, but there's been a few leave, but the crowd is still hanging in here with the jackets up 42 to seven. If this score stands the start of the fourth quarter, it will be a running clock, and that's what we're hoping for. Braves won tonight. 
All right, so the Jacket defense comes out. Kind of kept these, this Norval team at bay tonight. Quarterback takes a snap. He's going to throw out to that running back coming out. Oh. That's a, he need, they need to get it. That's a fumble. Yep. And it'll be, um, he threw it behind. That, we could tell that was coming. That's a loss of about seven yards. It rolled out of bounds on the on the 13-yard line. Running back came out of the backfield. That's what they've been hitting all night. He threw it behind, behind the runner, and uh, it went out of bounds. Jacket had to pick that up. That had been a, that was a fumble, considered a fumble. So could have been a scoop and score, couldn't that it? That backed them up to the 13-yard line. Second down, 17. Quarterback drops back to pass. He's looking right across the middle. He's got a man running down. Oh. And we're, and we're going to get I'm, that's, a, that's a payback there. Well, that's what that was. Well, that guy, he tripped over our defender. Yeah. You know, it, it, our defender was running step for step with him. He tried to break away from him when he did. He kind of got tripped up with him. That's why that was not called. So third down and 17 for Sonorable. It'll be third down and 17. Hey, well, we could hold them here. We get some great field for, uh, uh, yeah. What he said. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Quarterback takes takes the snap, looking to throw, looking downfield. Throws downfield. Got a guy wide open down here, and he makes a good catch. The throw was behind him. He turned around. Got a flag down here. It's going to be interesting to see what this is. It was thrown back on the 26-yard line. Quarterback was rolling out. He threw it behind his receiver. His receiver had to turn all the way around and kind of catch it behind him. But that play took a long time to get for him to throw it. So, so let's see what they call. I know one thing it ain't going to be. It ain't going to be face mask. I think they're going to call it on us. Uh, the way coach is acting, it may be. That's crazy, but they are calling it on us. I don't know what it is. They're going to say that we pushed off. Pass interference. I I don't see that, but I didn't see that either. Because the area that it was thrown in, way back here on the 30-yard line, I I, just, I don't get it. Of course, I don't get not throwing a flag for a face mask. Coach don't get it either, and he's letting her know about it. All right, so it, they declined it because he had got up to the 45-yard line, so it's first and ten for Sonorville on their own 45-yard line. Going to hand off to that running back, and he is hit in the backfield by number nine. Number number nine, Aiden Wright, got in there. Number nine, Aiden Wright with a tackle. Just got in there and knocked his feet out from under him about as, about as quick as he got the, the ball. Good play there by Aiden Wright. Yes, sir. Second down and 10 for us. Norville clock. Running 40 seconds left in this third quarter. Just let it run on. Yes, sir. That's what that's what Gerald Crab said. Run on. Run. All right. Two receivers split left, one right. Quarterback takes the snap, drops back to pass. He's looking downfield. Got a man. Got going to just have to run it himself up to the 50-yard line, cross it over to the 45 where he's going to have enough for a first down. That we had we had all the receivers well covered. They ain't going to get another playoff before the end of the third quarter. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. Jackets up 42 to 7. When we come back, we should have a running clock. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. 
Do it yourself doesn't mean do it alone. For 50 years, Buy Low True Value has been helping our customers do the projects, repairs, and maintenance. Buy Low True Value Hardware, 308 Nathan Dean Parkway in Rockmont. Call 770-684-5075 or look us up on Facebook. What's that, Evie? Hi, you. Evie, I'm right here at Tilly's Home Furnaces, 966 Cedartown Highway, looking for you, Evie. Hey, Evie, are you hiding behind the living room set and the recliner? Boop, Are you hiding behind them appliances? Boop, Come see us. Tilly's is located at 966 Cedartown Highway. Look us up on Facebook for your daily special. Hey, Jacket Nation. Coach Parson here, head football coach of the Rockmark Yellow Jackets. Thanks for listening to Jacket Football on WZOT. Now back to the game. Have you ever had a bank give you money for anything? Family Savings actually pays me for keeping my money at their credit union. I earn interest of 3% APY on my checking account and 1.5% APY on my savings, just for what I was already doing at my old bank. I even get up to $20 per month ATM fee returns. It's kind of nice to get paid for just using my checking account. Open an Engage account at Family Savings and Credit Union and get rewarded. Family Savings, your best financial friend. All right, we're back here, first and 10 as we start this fourth quarter. Ball sitting on the jacket 44 yard line, first and 10, Sonorville. Quarterback takes the snap, drops back to pass, looking downfield, and can't find anybody going to try to run it, and he has brought down. I'm trying to get the number of who. 55. Brought down by number 65 there, big uh, Jamiracle Hodges. You keep saying 55, Michael, on he him. He looks like a 55 jersey. <laughs> He's a big feller, and it, the jersey gets tucked underneath his shoulder pads just a little bit. Messed me up. And you can see better than all of us. You got the camera zooming in. <laughs> well. <laughs> I got to give you a hard time, Michael, or you'll think we didn't like it. I know it since Greg ain't here to do it. <laughs> all right, second down and 10. Quarterback takes the snap, going to delay handoff to his running back, going right up the middle and going to be brought down after a nine-yard gain. He kind of just stood there for a minute, kind of knew that that might happen with the running back just standing there. Move the ball down to the 35-yard line. All right, third down and one. Going to fake a handoff, roll out to his left, looking to throw under pressure, throws it across. Broken up there by number uh, 11 for the Jackets. I tell you, that was a good play there by Quinn Glover. And they'll be going for it. Quinn just got to reach the hand around it. Quarterback was rolling out. He was about to be surrounded by black jerseys. And uh, and I tell you, it was uh, a good play by Quinn Glover to knock it away, to bring down, bring up fourth and one. Clock running under 10 minutes and left in the game. Quarterback will hand off to that running back, just kind of picking his way through there enough for a first down and a few more yards there, just got Got in the middle of his line and they just started pushing. So that's going to be a first down at the 30 yard line. Clock running 9 30. Well, I know it ain't 55 on the next tackle because he just come to the sideline <laughs> for a breather. I won't be calling his number on this. All right. Quarterback hands off to that running back. He's going around the right side, trying to find a little bit of running room and did. Down for about seven yard gain. That little running back is quick. Yes, sir. They will say he picked up about six yards on the play. It's over on the other side of the field, so it's going to be second down and four. Second down and four for Sonorville. 
Quarterback takes a snap, going to hand off to that running back. And Aiden Wright comes in there again and drops him for a one-yard loss. Aiden was kind of hanging around back here, just on the side. And uh, as soon as nobody was blocking him, So it's going to bring up a third down and five. Time to get this ball off. It'll be under eight minutes to go in the ball game. Quarterback takes the snap, drops back, looking to pass. Nobody to throw to. He's under pressure. Finally just throws it out to the side. He, took he was hit lead. by Luke Clay as he was, a, as he was getting rid of the ball. Yep. He didn't have anybody to throw it to, well covered by our defenders down there. So let's go bring up a fourth down and five for Sonorville. Ball sitting right at their 35 yard line, our 15 yard line, I'm sorry, you gotta get it down to the 20. So it's in, uh, and they, they're taking their time as the clock rolls. 14 seconds left on the play clock. Quarterback in the backfield takes a snap, drops back, looking to pass, looking down the middle, across the middle, and he overthrows his guy who had a step on our guy. So that's going to bring up a first down for the Jackets, a turnover on downs. First and 10 from the 25-yard line for the Jackets. So a good Good stop there, good hold by our defense. Like I said, that uh, pass was overthrown a little bit, which was good on for us because he did have a step on our guy in the end zone. All right, so first and 10 for the Jackets. Hey, thanks for tuning in tonight and sticking with us here. Thanks to all of our sponsors who helps to bring Rock Martin High School sports to you. Couldn't do it without these guys. We appreciate all of them. Go by and tell and do business with them. Tell them you appreciate what they do. Shop Sharp local. in the backfield, going to hand off to McCreary coming around the right side. He's got a little bit of running room. He's down to the 30. Going to be finally pushed out of bounds about the 37-yard line, 38-yard line. So that's going to be enough for a yellow jacket, one source, home solution, first down. We've had seven so far this second half. So they're going to mark it at the 37-yard line where he went out of bounds. McCreary got a little bit of room around that right side and just kept knocking it out until he got out here on the end. Got look like some new jerseys in there, new faces in, in on offense, Mark. All right, handoff up the middle to number 16. Number 16 and that's uh, Gavin Green. We have a new quarterback in. We have Luke. Is it? Who's? I can't see. It's Par Parker. Luke Parker in at quarterback. Gavin Green. That's another one source home solution. Yellow Jacket first down. Trying to see here, we got uh, Dietrich Stribling, number 14 out there. Going to hand off to Gavin Green again. He fumbles it, it bounces right back up to him. He comes around the right side and he's down the right side to the 40, going to be knocked out of bounds. That ball was handed off to him. He, he dropped it, it was, it was not a clear handoff. It bounced back up. He started around the left side, turned around, came around the right side. Uh, and picked up enough for a Yellow Jacket one source home solution. Yellow Jacket first down. Ball down at the 38 yard line. Trying to get you some names of some. Uh, got number 11 out there, Quinn Glover, number 14. Once again, Diedrich Stripling. Number Stripling. 25. Going to hand off to number 22. And he is going to pick up about three yards, four yards, and be brought down. And that is Doster again. We've saw him <coughs> tonight already. Got uh, number 66 in there. 
Jordan Artiga. Just trying to throw some of these names out there to you to let you know who's playing. We've got number 51 in there, Keelan Burge. Uh, let's see, number 53 in there, Cody Williams. Got number 25 in there, JT Taylor, a 10th grader. Go and hand it off to JT Taylor, and he fumbled the ball. And so Norval got it. it not sure if it was a good handoff, but he couldn't grab a hold of it. And he fumbled it, and Sonorville picked it up. So, so we've got two minutes and 50 seconds, the clock rolling, and Sonorville takes over after a fumble. And the clock is not stopping. Good. Thank goodness. Jackets up 42 to seven. It's been a it's been a all Rockmart night. Good night for the Jackets. A few mistakes along the way, but but not enough to to really. Only one big mistake that cost the touchdown, and that was when they kicked off to us to start the second half, and just kicked a high kick, about 10 yards, 10 15 yards, and we just stood there and looked at it, and they got it. But uh, all right, so. Stay tuned for the post-game show. So Norville might have a new quarterback in. He takes a snap, going to hand off to a running back. And he's hit, running back he's hit sure. in the backfield. And, Michael, what number is that? That number 65. That's Jamiracal Hodges. I'm glad you saw it that time. Yeah. Number 65, yeah. Jamiracal, got in that backfield and, and brought him down. Minute 38, clock running. That was a loss of about five yards on the play, so it's going to be second down. They're going to say four-yard four loss. You know why I know it's 65? Number 55 standing right in front of the coach right here beside <laughs> me in front of him on the 46-yard line. Well, I'm glad you got it right got that it time. Got it right that time. All right. It took me only 48 minutes almost. Or 40, <laughs> see, two, one minute. Yeah, 47 minutes to finally call that fella's number right. <laughs> That's the reason why, David, and you yeah. do it. I don't. It's a miracle. He's, played, he's been playing real good these last yes, few sir. ball games. Yeah. All right. So Norville takes the snap, going to hand off to the running back, going right up the middle. Got a little bit of running room there. He's going to pick up about 10, 12 yards on the play. It's going to be third down and about four for Son Norville. They're going to get one, possible two more plays off, but they're probably it just going to settle with one. Yeah, it all depends on how quick they run this one. They're still trying to get set. Yeah. And uh, – Clock's running, 32 seconds left. The crowd here knows it's over with anyway. They're S headed for the parking lot. 16 on the play clock, 12. One more play is going to do it here tonight. Quarterback takes the snap, hands off to his running back. He goes right up the middle, and he is hit by a host of jackets. After he picks up about four yards on the play, I think is enough for a first down. And But that's going to be it, folks. That's going to be the, the final play of the night. The, Homecoming night for the Jackets. Jackets win 42 to seven here against the Norville. We're off next week and then the big matchup against North Cobb Christian here at the Rock. We need everybody facing this place to help these guys to cheer them on. That's that's one of the games that we go probably going to decide who's going to be the region champ because both of them are setting, Rockmart and North Cobb Christian setting at the top of the, the um, region. So come out and and let's support them. But we're off next week, so we'll be back here in two weeks. Michael, uh, thanks for for uh, giving up your job at your other radio station tonight, oh, so that you goodness. can come and come and help us. Hey, hey and, listen, and, listen, <laughs> listen. With all seriousness, y'all, if y'all could come on out to the uh, coaches show down at the uh, down at the fellowship, uh, ooh, the Methodist Church of Rockmart down there. Uh, Monday night it's, and, and support the band and I'm sure the football team and coach will be there too and also if you want to tune in to the post game show at 101.9 uh, Torline and Bill and Busy B will be uh, talking to coach as he calls in and they be doing a rundown on all the touchdowns so thank y'all again appreciate y'all letting me do this alright we're going to close it out here tonight thanks for tuning in and final score 42 to 7 a congratulations a big congratulations to Cheyenne Jordan on winning homecoming queen 
for 2024. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for the coaches show. I mean, for the post-game show. You've been listening to exclusive coverage of Rock Mart High School Yellow Jacket Football on WZOT 101.9 Hometown Radio. Presented by Garrett Land Company, Mitchell Chiropractic, Mary Miller State Farm, Taylor Transport, Blossman Propane Gas and Appliance, Rake Straw Tire and Automotive, Clint Brock and the Rock Mart Raceway, Live Wire Surplus, Smith's Land Clear, Jennifer Holtzy and the Lankford Insurance Firm, John and Debbie Forsyth of Merle Norman Cosmetics and Boutique, Culver Exterminating Company, 